Okay, this is my husband's side of the room, so please forgive. It is not very cute. I was not gonna clean that up, but it's okay because this is not what we're gonna be looking at today. Because what we're doing is, per request, a Jollo ranking slash tier list. I was gonna get dolled up for this, but let's just make this more of a cozy video. It's cold, it's rainy, this is my first day back to work. I'm tired. So let's just snuggle up, get yourself like a hot chocolate or coffee or something. And we're just going to, in sleepover style, rank some Jolly today. This is my first time doing one of these, so hopefully it goes smooth. We're only gonna discuss 25 Jolly today. I've seen 80, but there's no way we're gonna do 80 of them. So I just went with 25. And what I did was I just went in chronological order, like the oldest Jollo I've seen from 1963, and just kind of going chronologically, picking the ones that I've seen. Here are the tiers I've come up with. Top favorite, worth the hype, solid installment, lackluster, total flop, and regret watching. And we're gonna start off with the girl who knew too much. So I would say, I would say worth the hype. I thought it was beautiful. It has a lot of value in being the legendary first Jalo ever. It has an awesome cast and it's just nice and creepy. Next we have Blood and Black Lace. I'm going to have to say worth the hype for them as well. Similarly to The Girl Who Knew Too Much, they're both just like very standard, highly beloved, but also really, really stylish and beautiful. Now, 60s Jolly aren't my favorite, but they're very classy. Next, we have Death Laid an Egg. I'm putting that in my top favorite. I know that's controversial. Okay, so when I say top favorite, I mean like my favorite, not like would be everyone's favorite, but these, this is according to my taste, okay? I know why that people hate Death Laid an Egg, but I just love it because it's so weird and because it stars Ava Aline. Or is it Eva? I don't know. Next we have The Young, The Evil, and The Savage, AKA Naked You Die. It's hard. I kind of want to put it on solid installment, but I think I'm gonna have to say lackluster. I say that, but I do love, I do appreciate the movie. It's a lovable, but it's a 60s one. I think it's a 60s Jollo, and it's just not, I mean, no one's even naked. There's whatever, okay? It's just very like light and doesn't have that zing, you know, that especially 70s Jolly get. Okay, same with the Black Veil for Lisa. I don't remember too much about it. it. This is the one that has Haley Mills's father in it. I mean, it was okay, I guess, but it's gonna. I'm gonna say lackluster for that one as well. Okay, guys, this is kind of fun. Next, we have Interabang, which I have kind of a love hate relationship with because it too. I mean, it was. There's no like brutality. It kind of felt like a mystery play. The characters were all kind of awful people, and they were just mean to each other the whole time. But with Interabang, you know, I won't shut up about it. I love the soundtrack, and I love the setting, like the beach, the beach thing, and all the bikinis and stuff. So I'm gonna put it under solid installment. Next, the Doll of Satan. I I just like this maybe because of Satan. I don't know, but I just, I always put this in my favorites list. I, it might change if I watched it again, but it had vibes similar to The Girl in Room 2A, in my opinion. So yeah, Doll of Satan is just gonna go on up there. Next we have Death Knocks Twice. That was a total flop even though it had Fabio Testi and Anita Strindberg in it, if I recall correctly. Okay, next we have the bird with the crystal plumage. 
for some reason, it just, it didn't grip me enough to become a top favorite per se, but I think it is worth the hype. Okay, next is Hatchet for the Honeymoon. I think I'm going to put that on a top favorite. I think that's where it belongs. I love the whole theme of killing brides, and I loved the lead, and it has Dagmar in it, and it's, and it's beautiful. I did a whole review on that movie. I don't need to reiterate myself, but yeah, top favorite. <sighs> next is... Paranoia, a.k.a. A Quiet Place to Kill, starring Kill Carol Baker. Um, I'm teetering between solid installment and lackluster, but I think I'm going to have to put it under solid installment because it was watchable. It does have Carol Baker in it, and there were some just some little moments there that I, you know, I just liked. Solid installment. A jalo worth watching, basically. Next is $5 for an August Moon. This is a Bava film, am I right? Um, and it has Edwige Fenech, my queen, in it. So that's where, where I want to put it under worth the hype. I'm, going, I'm between worth the hype and solid installment because, you know, it wasn't my favorite when I watched it. I do want to watch it again. Um, I think just because it has Edwige in it should be enough that it falls under worth the hype. And I can't help but be swayed. I hear a lot of good things about that movie from you guys, the community. Next, Forbidden Foes of a Lady Above Suspicion. Where do you think I'm going to put that? Top favorite. Top favorite over here. There. It's just a perfect film. Okay, maybe not perfect. It's perfect for me. Next, Weekend Murders. That is a total flop because it was kind of like a weird British mystery comedy almost. That wasn't fun. Next, a Lizard in a Woman's Skin. That has a spot on my top favorites. I prefer Lizard in a Woman's Skin over Don't Torture a Duckling, both by Fulci. It has kept a spot on my top favorites ever since I saw it. Next, The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. That is my top favorite Jalo ever, right alongside Forbidden Foes of Lady Bell Suspicion. Those are my two top favorite Jolly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Next, The Case of the Scorpion's Tail, starring Anita Strindberg and George Hilton, lands a spot on my top favorites. Same with Black Belly of the Tarantula. I don't know. I just really liked it. Okay, next we have Cat of Nine Tails, an Argento film. I would say worth the hype. I had a great time with that movie. It has that classic Argento style of storytelling with interesting characters. Next we have The Bloodstained Butterfly. I would call that a solid installment. I wasn't crazy about it, but it wasn't bad. <sighs> Next is The Double. Again, The Double is starring one of my favorite Jalo actresses, Eva Aline. But it wasn't that good. Oh, it also so stars Jean Sorel, who I'm starting to become a little more familiarized with. So again, really good cast, kind of a flop of a story. Uh, it would pain me to put it under lackluster, but I think I have to. I think I have to. Sorry, I love you. Next is the iguana with the tongue of fire. I would call that a solid installment. And next, Bay of Blood, which I think for me deserves another rewatch. People are crazy about Bay of Blood. And while I do agree that the violence was awesome. I just couldn't quite like the story. Maybe I just wasn't in the right place to be watching, but the story didn't grab me. 
Not that I, that's what I like to pin on, but the story, I felt like it was confusing. It was convoluted. Like I didn't really understand what was going on. Like the characters just seemed like throwaway characters. So please don't come for me. I think I'm going to put it under solid installment, but it has the potential to get promoted later. Some of these I watched at the very beginning of my Jollo journey. Most of these I've only watched one time. We all evolve, we all change, we all grow. Opinions change. So that's where Bay of Blood is right now, sorry. <laughs> Next, the fourth victim, AKA Death at the Deep End of the Swimming Pool, another Carol Baker movie. And if you've been around here for a while, you know it's on my list of least favorite jolly. So I'm gonna call it a total flop. And finally, Death Walks on High Heels. I'm gonna call it a solid installment. It was good, but it wasn't the best thing ever, but it also didn't really flop. It was just kind of in the middle there. So it's like a, a C plus. And there, I did my first tier list. That was super fun. I think 25 was a good place to stop though. Now, as you can see, none of those films made it into my I regret watching tier. I'm going to do at least two more of these videos and some other Jolly are definitely going to land on I Regret Watching. But for now, the 60s and 70s, early 70s were good to us, weren't they? Well, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> this was truly fun. I have seen enough Jolly that I can do another uh, 25 in another video and then a third set of 25 to to 30. So thank you for hanging out. Hope I did uh, this type of video justice. Let me know what your thoughts are, how you would rank things, how you would rearrange things, or if there's anything you highly agree or disagree with. Ciao for now.